Welcome to Impact Factor, your weekly dose of commentary on a new medical study. I'm Dr. F. Prey Wilson of the Yale School of Medicine, and once again this week we're doing a informal journal club to talk about a really interesting study that just came out that tries to answer the question of, of why your brain wears out. Um, so I'm going to put myself in the corner here and let's walk through this study, which appears in Current Biology. Um, the lead author here is Antonius Wheeler from Paris. Um, and the big question here is, is what's going on with cognitive fatigue? Okay, so, so if you look at a chess player who's, you know, exerting a lot of cognitive effort, it's well documented that over time, over hours of play, they get worse. They make more mistakes. It takes them longer to make decisions. And the, the question is, like, why? <laughs> why is that? You know, um, why does your brain get tired? And to, to date, it's been a little bit hard to exactly tease tease that out. Now, there is some suggestion of, of at least what's responsible for this. So the cognitive control center of the brain is probably somewhere in the left lateral prefrontal cortex here, <laughs> here somewhere. Um, you know, the prefrontal cortex is responsible for sort of the, the higher level thinking. It's the thing that, that causes you to be inhibited. It's the thing that gets shut offline, you know, by alcohol and stuff like that and leads to impulsive behaviors. And this part, the left lateral prefrontal cortex, um, according to fMRI studies, um, has reduced activity as people get more and more cognitively fatigued. So this is probably the thing that's, that's you know, helping you think through choices and, um, and helps that aspect of cognition because as you get more fatigued, this area of the brain isn't working as well. But again, the question is like, like why? Why would it not work as well? What is going on in that particular part of the brain? It doesn't seem to be something simple like glucose levels. That's been investigated. Um, and glucose levels are pretty constant uh, throughout the brain, um, uh, regardless of the, the cognitive uh, task. Um, and so this paper really seeks to tease out, okay, like what is actually going on in the left lateral prefrontal cortex when you are getting cognitively tired? Um, so to do this, they did an experiment where they had to induce cognitive fatigue. And man, does this sound like a painful experiment. Um, they basically took volunteers. It was uh, more than six hours of doing these sessions where they had this cognitive switching task. So they'd show you a letter um, in a given color, like red or green. And you would have to say whether it was a vowel or a consonant or whether it was capital or lowercase based on the color. So like, like, if, it, if it's red, say if it's a consonant or a vowel, but if it's green, say if it's capital or lowercase. So you'd see this and you'd have to say, okay, it's red. So consonant is the answer. Vowel, lowercase, consonant. <laughs> it's hard. Um, it's a cognitive switching task. And doing it for six hours is likely to induce a lot of cognitive fatigue. Now they had a control group as well, really important here. They also did a task like this for six hours, but for them, they didn't change the color very much. I think they changed the color, you know, once per session, you do multiple sessions over the six hours. So it was just like red, 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 red. So it was pretty easy to say, you know, consonant, vowel, consonant, vowel. Whereas in the hard group, they were switching colors back and forth um, quite a lot. And they also had a memory challenge that worked in a similar way. Um, so, so what are the readouts of this study? Well, you've got the group that went through the hard cognitive challenge and the group that went through the easy cognitive challenge. And there's a variety of metrics that they look at. And I'll give you just a few. The first is performance decrement. Like, do you get it wrong, right? Like what percent of the time do you say consonant when you should have said lowercase or something like that? And what you can see here is that the hard group does a little bit worse um, overall. You know, it's harder, so they don't do as well. That makes sense. But both groups kind of wane over time a little bit, and it's not like the hard group goes down much more. So the slopes of those lines are pretty similar. Um, so not, not uh, very robust findings there. What about subjective fatigue? So this is just, they ask the participant like, okay, how, how exhausted are you from doing this? And in, in both groups, they, they, they wore them out. You know, it's a long day. Um, you know, there's a suggestion that there's sort of more, the, the hard group got worn out a little bit quicker, but I don't think this um, achieved statistical significance. Everyone was getting tired by, you know, um, by hour six here. What about response time? So how quick can you say consonant, vowel, you know, lowercase, uppercase? Um, 
similar to the prior results. The hard group, it takes longer because it is a harder task, but over time, the response times, you know, were pretty, were pretty flat. So, so far, there's not like a robust readout that would make us say, oh yeah, that is a good marker of cognitive fatigue. That's how you measure cognitive fatigue. It's not what people say. It's not how quick they are. It's not really even how accurate they are. But then they got a little bit clever. So they played a game, um, essentially a would you rather game, a reward game. Um, so here's two examples. Uh, you could either have a 25% chance of earning $50, euros in this case, but um, they, and they really, this, this was true, you really would win, or a 95% chance of earning $17.30. So here's a cognitive thing you have to do, right? You have to say like, wait, okay, wait, which, which are the better odds? What, you know, what, what should I be choosing here? Um, another example, you can earn $50, but the next task session you do is gonna be hard, or $40 and you get an easy one. Um, so trying to sort of tease out whether you prefer low cost, sort of lower risk choices when you're cognitively fatigued, which has been shown in prior studies. And this showed a pretty dramatic difference between the groups in terms of the low cost bias, how much more likely you are to pick that low cost, the easier choice as you get more and more cognitively fatigued. So the hard group more likely to pick the easy thing um, rather than potentially the more lucrative thing, um, which is really interesting when we think about how our own uh, cognitive fatigue happens, you know, at the end of a difficult workday or something like that, how you may just be likely, you're just more likely to say, okay, right? You're just more likely to go with the flow, to do something easy because you just don't have that much, um, that much uh, control left, that much decision-making power left. Um, be nice to have some objective physiologic measurements, and they, they do here. This is pupil dilation. And so um, when you're paying attention to something, your pupils kind of dilate a little bit. And what they were able to show here is that in the hard group, as they got more and more fatigued, that pupil dilation sort of went away. In fact, if anything, maybe they constricted even a little bit. But but basically, there's a significant difference here where um, uh, the, the easy group who had the easy challenge, you know, their pupils were still fine. They were still dilating. The hard group is just they're getting worn down. Their pupils are getting more sluggish, essentially. And so a physiologic correlate of what's going on. But again, these are all sort of downstream of whatever's happening in the left lateral prefrontal cortex. Um, and so the real meat of this study is a, a functional MRI um, type of uh, analysis. And, and, and the way they did this is pretty clever. So what they were looking for were metabolites in the various parts of the brain. So this is actually a, a labeled hydrogen MRI. So even fancier than a functional MRI, it's actually able, it's like MR spectroscopy. So it can measure the level of certain chemicals in the brain. And what they hypothesized was that if there's a chemical that builds up when you're getting tired, then it should build up preferentially, when you're getting cognitively tired, it, it should build up prefer preferentially in the left lateral prefrontal cortex, that's IPFC in this graph here, IPFC in this graph here. Um, and whereas in the rest of the brain, there shouldn't be that much difference because we know the action's happening in the IPFC. And so, so their control part of the brain is a section called V1. And they looked at a variety of metabolites, but the only one that sort of behaved the way they expected was um, glutamate and glutamic acid. Um, so glutamate metabolites. And so what you see here is that in the hard group, the glutamate is building up over time. There's a higher concentration of glutamate, again, in the left lateral prefrontal cortex, not the rest of the brain. There's also a greater diffusion of glutamate from the intracellular to the extracellular space, um, which suggests that it's kind of leaking out of cells. And I, I'm, I'm literally hand-waving, of course, because I'm not entirely sure that's what's going on. But, but the signal here is that the thing that is kind of being... Um, that, that it's impacting that part of the brain is this buildup of glutamate. Finally, just to kind of tie it together, what they showed um, in the scatter plot is the relationship between the increase in glutamate and the, uh, the, 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 that low cost bias, that, um, you know, that decision fatigue uh, example, um, which shows like the more, basically this is showing, you know, not the strongest correlation, but it is statistically significant that the more glutamate is in your left lateral, lateral prefrontal cortex, the more likely you are to just take the easy decision as opposed to really thinking things through. Um, and that's, that is pretty 
powerful. <laughs> you know what what it's telling us is now that you know glutamate that that your brain making you fatigued, making you less likely to continue to use your left lateral prefrontal cortex may be a self-defense mechanism against a buildup of glutamate, which may be neurotoxic. Um, and that's that's really a fascinating bit of homeostasis. And of course, it makes you wonder how we might um, we might uh, uh, adjust glutamate levels in the brain, although, you know, maybe we should let the brain um, uh, be tired if the brain wants to be tired. It reminds me of that old Far Side cartoon where, you know, the guy is raising his hand and he's like, you know, can I be excused? My brain is full. I mean, essentially that's what's happening. This part of your brain is getting taxed and taxed and taxed and is building up glutamate. And there's some kind of negative feedback loop. The authors don't know what the receptor uh, pathway is that's going to then downregulate that part of the brain based on the glutamate buildup, but some kind of negative feedback loop that says, okay, give this part of the brain a rest. Things, you know, have gone on too far here. So a really fascinating study. You know, it's not clear what we do with this information. It's not clear um, uh, whether you know, we can manipulate glutamate levels in this particular part of the brain or not, but it's um, it's nice to see some biologic correlates of a psychological phenomenon that is incredibly well described. That's this phenomenon of decision fatigue. And I think we all feel it at the end of a hard work day. It's if you, you're, you've been, you know, doing a lot of cognitively intensive tasks, you just don't have it in you anymore. Um, and maybe the act of a good night's sleep is clearing out some of, some of that glutamate in the left lateral prefrontal cortex, which lets you start over and uh, make some good decisions again. So I hope you all make some good decisions and keep your glutamate levels low. Um, and I'll see you next time.